Hello, say chat up. We all have two lives. One life that is lived, and another life that is thought about. See, our life is lived from day to day. This is where we have to wake up on time, and we have to drive to work, and try to use all the time that is left to do everything else that we have to do, to study and take care of our health, to clean our house and stay with our family, go out with friends. Our life that is thought is the life in our imagination, the one that we think about, about how we would like our life to be like. It is the idealization, this ideal job, the ideal home, the ideal relationship. But between these two lives, which is the real one? Most of us will say that the real one is the life that we actually live. Whatever the answer, there is an action that you can take to greatly improve your quality of life. This attitude is to reduce the abyss between the lived life and the thought life. The conflict between who you are and who you want to be is the very substance of life. The difference between your real situation and the situation you want in your life is probably the biggest source of tension. It is to reduce this gap that you work to advance your career, then you can earn more money. Then you work out to lose weight or to gain more muscle mass. Then you read more books or you learn new skills. Directly or indirectly, almost everything that we do seeks to reduce the space between the life that we live and the life in our thoughts. However, most of us try to do this uh, as an improvised, a reactive way, without enough planning. And when a problem arises, we react to it, we try to solve it. And we're going down that path when another problem arises and we pivot to another path. We make a little bit of progress, but then something happens and when we regress to an even worse situation. And with time passes, and then we see that we're, we're lost in life, we are far from the situation that we would like to have. This is why very few people manage to bring together the life that they live and the life they would have in their thoughts. Just ask anyone if they have the life that they would like to have, most people would say, not yet. So if you want to be part of the small group of people who can bring these two lives together, you need to stop reacting to events in a disorderly way and start to intentionally take control of your own life. The best way to bridge this gap between the lived life and the life that we think about is with a combination of planning and action. Let's be honest. The conflict between who you are and who you'd like to be will never end. Even if today, by magic, you solved all your problems, you became who you wanted to be, soon afterwards you yourself would invent new desires, new aspirations, new ideal situations. The desire to change is always present in human nature. There are people who dedicate a lifetime to meditating and trying to free themselves from the attachment to this constant desire for change. And even then, not everyone succeeds. Imagine ordinary people like you and me, the, the chances of being fully satisfied with everything that we have is a very small chance. So it is best to accept that we will always have this need, that the conflict between who we are and who we would like to be, it will last forever. But even if the difference between the lived life and the thought life is an eternal thing, you can and you should at least reduce the distance between one and the other. Otherwise, you will always be frustrated thinking about the whole life that could have been and it wasn't. And how do you go about reducing this difference? How do you bridge the gap between the lived life and the thought life? That is with the combination of planning an action. If you just plan, well, nothing will happen. You may be even deceiving yourself that you're putting your dreams on paper, you're setting goals, you're drawing up life plans. But this is not very different from what most people do, They're from simply dreaming, just imagining what their ideal life would be like. Now, on the other hand, if you just keep acting, hardly anything will happen either. Because you'll always be busy, always doing something, always wanting to be productive, but this kind of chaotic, unordered action doesn't have the ability to consistently 
close that gap between your real life and your desired life. So just actions, they are not enough. You, you need some strategy. Therefore, the best way to reduce this gap is to combine good planning with consistent action. Planning to bring the lived life closer to the thought life, it has to focus especially on the obstacles. A good life plan should prioritize the things that you value the most, your vision of the future and, and your specific goals. Also, you also have to be very clear, have a very clear list about the habits that you need, the actions that you need to take and become that person that you want to be. And to make this good planning, you have to sit down, you have to think, you have to write it down and write down in detail what your idealized life would be like, all these ideas that are only in your head today. This is an exercise that will require self-knowledge and also certain techniques. You need to separate what are your personal values that will be guiding this idealized life. What are the goals that you need to fulfill in order to make these dreams turn into reality? Uh, what are the habits? What are the tasks that you need to implement to achieve all these goals? And by doing this, you will already have a very good plan in hand and you'll be able to be in front of most people who are just imagining, daydreaming what a better life would be like. If you want a great life planning, then you need to refine your planning to focus on the obstacles. Because if you just think about it, it is precisely the obstacles that are preventing you from having the life that you would like to have today. Emperor Marcus Aurelius wrote that what prevents action favors action. What stands in the way becomes the way. So in other words, the obstacle is the way. The things you resist doing the most, these are the things that you most need to do. If you have been procrastinating some action for a long time, you can be sure that this action is one of the most important ones for you to bring your real life a little bit closer to your desired life. When you're making your planning, try to start with the actions that you resist the most doing. If you've been struggling for years to start a diet, start your planning over there. If you've been saying that you're going to start your own business for many years, start there. Prioritize the obstacles and you'll see the progress faster than if you just act on whatever is easier for you. Instead of doing random things or just doing what you're used to doing or what you like to do, just focus on your biggest fears, your biggest difficulties, the things that really stop you from having the life that you would like to have today. By doing this, you will be able to bridge the gap between who you are and who you would like to be. We all have two lives, the lived life and the thought life. Closing the gap between these two lives is one of the most important actions that you can take. And the best way to do this is to combine good life planning with consistent, targeted action to tackle your biggest obstacles. And for those of you who are interested in discovering how to do all this type of planning, I invite you now to attend a special class on the Planning Your Life course. You can go to the address arata.se forward slash planning your life right now.